So I wanted to go and use this and I realised that I've got to look at this um, tap off module here for my bird RF meter. Now this is a 4275-100 Cut supposed to count up to 1 gigahertz and I've been noticing that if I adjust the front trimmer there to adjust the level it's not been doing anything and the level doesn't change. We mean to actually have a look at this for a while. I've decided to do it now. So I pulled the thing apart. This normally sits on the side of the bird like this. Just pushed on the front. It's got a couple of bolts to go through. Hold it on. All right. Look, that's an optional thing. You don't actually have to have that. You can just have the connector there um, without those long bolts. Um, just show it on the side. Normally, that's normally how they are, like that. But I've got this tap-off module, which you can just add on. That's simple enough. Now. What I've found is that it is faulty. So that's the tap off piece which comes out if you can get it right. Like that. Okay, what's that? What's got a date on there? 92. Is that the 38th 92? The date on there? Um, and that's the actual module. It's pretty simple. Now I've already taken all the screws obviously to get the thing apart. And there's that piece there that comes up the front. Now this is where the issue is. Um, if you look in there, you can see there's like a bore for the centre. I'll get the thing to focus. Hold on. Come on, focus on that. Here we go. Um, you can see there's a bore for the centre. Right. And then that metal piece in the middle there is the actual the conductor between each side for the OF connection. Right, and then it passes straight through, and that side is where the hole is for the other part. Now, so that's got an insulated tip on there, but that's just proximity. It's just purely proximity that works on that. And this is this the mechanical assembly for moving the part around. This little piece here is what actually does the job. Now, that was still in there. I've actually got this out, and I don't even see it on there tip of this but the tip is actually broken off so it's got like a supposed to be a hole through it the pin or well, the, the back half is it's broken off it's still inside here it goes together like that somehow or other I think it's that must be that way around it fits better that way around okay so it sits in like that and there's supposed to be a pin through it to uh, so it's attached to the end of that shaft so when you wind this in and out winds the shaft in and out in order to, to slide this in and out to create, change the proximity gap between the tap off point and the main conductor in the centre so that's how the thing works but it's broken off so what happened is only push it in and I'll pull it back um, but trying to get this sorted is going to be interesting because it doesn't want to come out or move or anything it seems to be it might even be glued in there, I don't know, but it doesn't like it won't come out. So I'm going to have to look at trying to figure out a way of fixing this. I'm not sure how yet. Um, if I just glued it, it'd probably be fine, but it's a swiveling shaft, it's not supposed to spin. It may not matter, but I mean, if I glue it on the end of the shaft, it'd probably be okay, but then it's got to be dead straight as well so it doesn't jam. So, um, I mean, yeah. 3D printing apart, that's possible, but what's this made out of? This is something which is going to be um, probably immune to RF and stuff like that because of the, you know, being an RF field. So I really don't know. I mean, I could probably disassemble this some more and take the cap off this, for example, and that'll probably get me to the end of that shaft. So look at that. Let's see if I can get the cap off. Yeah, they're completely destroying it. I don't want to damage it. No, it's pushed on it pretty well. I'll leave that alone. Um, so, yeah, this is what I need to fix in order to repair this part. So I thought I'd just show you that bit. So you actually know how they work. I'm sure some would be interested. Alright, so I've got the uh, CMU200 fired up. 
I've got it set up with this radio in here, which I'm just doing a basic transmit test on. There you go, there's a signal. And I'll do the marker. Alright, so I think the frequency reference in this has drifted off again, even though I've already adjusted it. I think it's it's changed again. It says it's about one kilohertz off, which is interesting. But um, anyway, there's a signal there, and it's kind of reading 32 dBm, or minus 32 dBm. And if I wind in the, the uh, bird takeoff, there you go, it's down to 22 dBm. So I've got a 10 dBm range on that thing. It actually goes slightly more than that if I bring it out a little bit more and go about like another three, I think. You know, sort of two or three, maybe. Just like, oh, there you go, it's minus 35 and all the way back up to, say, minus 22. All right, so it is actually working now, but before it wouldn't do anything. So I've also have repaired it. So uh, I'm pretty happy about that. It's, uh, I don't think it's ever been right. I don't remember it feeding that way. So it feels a bit stiff to turn now. Whereas, you know, it's got some resistance to it. It was before it didn't have anything. So I think it's probably always been broken. <laughs>